one. And good evening, everyone, and welcome uh, to the uh, August meeting of La Trobe City Council's ordinary meeting, uh, 3rd of August at 6 o'clock, and we are um, live uh, streaming and we are meeting via uh, our go-to meeting uh, teleconference system. And a good evening to you all, councillors. Um, as uh, we are meeting online, uh, this is uh, special uh, circumstances that we've been provided uh, by the state government's uh, omnibus uh, bill that they put through, which allows councils to meet uh, remotely uh, via teleconference uh, under the proviso that we live stream that, which we are doing uh, this evening. Uh, attending an ordinary council meeting um, needs to have uh, the members who are in attendance, which is the nine councillors and the CEO, uh, must confirm that they can hear the proceedings, that they can see all other members who are in attendance and that they can be heard when they speak. So just as a way of uh, a technical check, if we will, before we get started, uh, I'll run around uh, the virtual room and just check that everyone can hear, everyone can be heard and everyone can be seen and can see all the other councillors and the CEO. I'll start with uh, Councillor Alan McFarlane, uh, the Deputy Mayor. Alan. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yes, I can see everyone and I think I have had the opportunity to hear everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Darrell White. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yes, I can see everybody and I believe I can hear everybody. Thank you. Excellent. Councillor Kelly O'Kelligan. Thank you, Mr Mayor. can see and hear everyone. Councillor Brad Law. I can hear everyone, Dan. I can't see everyone at the moment because I'm on my iPad while my service pro is not um, up, is still updating. Yep. Can you scroll your screen on the iPad to see that uh, the other people are present? Uh, yeah, I'll be able to do that. Great. No worries. At least you know that they're in the room. Thanks very yep. much, Councillor Law. Uh, Councillor Graham Middlemas. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I see and hear all. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Councillor Dale Harriman. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I can see and hear everybody. Thank you. Councillor Sharon Gibson. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I can see and hear everybody. Thank you. And Councillor Darren Howe. Oh, good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everybody. I can see and hear everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Councillor Howe. And the CEO, uh, Mr. Stephen Piacenti. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I can hear and can see all the councils. Uh, thank, thanks very much for that tech check. That's uh, got everyone present now. We can uh, officially start the meeting. I'd like to start the meeting um, uh, with the opening prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I'd like to acknowledge that we are meeting on the traditional land of the Barakalong people of the Gunai Kurnai Nation and I pay my respects to their elders past and present. And if there are any other elders uh, with us this evening via live stream or watching this, I would like uh, to acknowledge them as well. Uh, the conditions of entry of this meeting, and even though we're all, all separate, the, the same conditions under our local law uh, exist and that all uh, members of the council need to behave in a courteous and respectful manner during, uh, after and uh, while the meeting is going and respectively uh, people need to be uh, in, in accordance with our local law one, uh, which I have in front of me as well. Uh, the chair may order or remove any person, including a councillor who disrupts the meeting at all. Uh, we are live streaming, as I've mentioned before. Uh, we're doing that via our YouTube channel this evening with the link off to our Facebook page so people can uh, watch at home on any items that are, are, are of interest. Uh, the council meetings uh, cannot be recorded in according to our local law uh, and no one has requested this evening that, uh, that they would like to record this, this um, meeting. But of course, it, it sits on um, 
on uh, our YouTube channel after the event and people can watch that back if they need to. Move to item uh, three on the agenda. Uh, any apologies or absences? And uh, as I can see, uh, all nine councillors and CEO here, I have no apologies uh, in writing beforehand and I see you all and no one is absent. So that's, uh, and our tech checkers um, check that off that everyone's here as well. Declarations of interest at item four. Are there any councillors who have a declaration of interest on tonight's agenda? Uh, any items? Councillor McFarlane. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a, a conflict at item 10.1, uh, resolution one, uh, in relation to the wages and salaries uh, part of the budget for which uh, my wife works as a preschool assistant. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Councillor McFarlane. Does anyone else uh, have uh, a declaration of interest on any of the items on the agenda this evening? No, we're all silent. Thank you very much. Uh, we move to the adoption of the minutes. Uh, Councillor O'Callaghan, I note you, and I think was that Councillor Middlemas as well, was it? Yep. Councillor O'Callaghan, moving. Councillor Middlemas, seconding. Any, would you like to speak, Councillor O'Callaghan? No. Councillor Middlemas? No, thanks. Any other councillors? No, we'll take those. Minutes as adopted as there are no um, objections or any speakers. Thank you. Uh, we move to acknowledgements now. Councillor Kelligan, I see you. That's a, a very good indication with your hand. It's covering that. So I see that straight away. Thanks for that. It's a big, big I movement. Blend, I blend into my walls. I apologise, Mr. No, it's, a good, it's a good acknowledgement. Thank you very much. And so acknowledgements as a part of our meeting. Uh, is an opportunity for the councillors to acknowledge um, our community uh, and in a, con a congratulatory sense or a condolence sense as well. So uh, thank you, Councillor Callaghan, you can open up. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Just wanted to take the opportunity to acknowledge all of those workers within our community who are providing response and support, not only to our immediate community members, but to those further afield where they reach out into other areas and sectors, and particularly in relation to our COVID-19 response. Uh, we will know that in Latrobe uh, over the last few days in particular, but certainly over the last few weeks, there have been an increasing number of confirmed cases of COVID-19. Although we don't have uh, the level and scale of confirmed case as Metropolitan Melbourne does, there certainly is uh, an ever-increasing number. And we extend our thanks to those working in a range of sectors, including health, aged care, community service, essential industry, education, business, and also those who are providing service and supply to our community members and our services to ensure that they're able uh, to be looked after, cared for, and supported. Uh, we know that this is a challenging time. It is particularly difficult in terms of the work that they need to undertake, and we're grateful for that. Uh, more so because in some circumstances, unfortunately, when cases are con confirmed, there have been some unfortunate situations where even workers in those spaces have been targeted uh, for uh, less than kind uh, contribution um, from others. And we just ask our community to be aware of the level of kindness we need to extend to everyone because any one of us could in fact be impacted in relation to COVID-19. And Mr. Mayor, I also wanted to extend thanks to the broader community for their overwhelming support of the Mask Up with Trove campaign that we've recently undertaken. Individuals, community groups and organisations have gone out of their way to make sure that members of our community, particularly those who are experiencing vulnerability, have access to and support to obtain face masks and appropriate face coverings. Uh, it has been an overwhelmingly generous contribution by a broad range of organisations right across the sectors, whether it be CWA groups, sporting clubs, neighbourhood houses, uh, but even individuals making and distributing around their own neighbourhood networks to ensure that everybody has the opportunity to obtain, use and find an appropriate face mask. And as we've always said, in relation to strength-led work that we do, we go out of our way and we try to make sure that no one is left behind. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Thanks, Councillor O'Callaghan. Thanks very much for those acknowledgements. Is there any other councillor who would like to make an acknowledgement this evening?
No, thank you. Thank you very much, councillors. We move to um, item seven on our agenda, which is the public participation time. Uh, now, we usually have either people would write in uh, to, to us and have their questions answered uh, to the CEO, but we also are able to have people come and speak to the councillors on any item that is in the agenda for this, this council meeting as a public speaker. Uh, those people are able to um, uh, register with council before 12 o'clock on the, the Monday of the council meeting uh, and then able to join us in this forum online. So, um, Mr CEO, I'll just check with you. Uh, are there any been any uh, questions that have been sent in to the organisation you need to address this evening? Uh, no, Mr Mayor, no questions on notice for tonight's meeting. Right, thank you very much. Uh, we do have um, a question, a uh, public speaker, one public speaker who is joining us, and I'll see if we can get the governance team to um, to pop them online. Unless they are, I'll just uh, check my technology. Not in at the moment. We have one speaker who is speaking to us this evening on uh, item 15.1 uh, in the agenda, but clearly we need to, to wait for that person to join us um, on the um, on the, uh, the the teleconference service. So just keeping a bit of an eye on. Yes, yeah, so, uh, just through you, Mr. Mayor, governance team have sent um, a message to the uh, speaker to join us. So I hope we're not far away. Thanks very much for that update. Just keep an eye on. I am reluctant, councillors, to, to move on to another area of the the agenda, as we may um, the the speaker may want to speak to those items. So it's it's best that we do this up front uh, and just be patient. Uh, is uh, is Mark now? Okay, Mark. We'll see, we'll see if we can get your um, your microphone off there. There's a little mic button. There it is. Give us a sound check. Yep. Hello. Yes, working. Yes, Mark. Yes, beautiful. Good day, Mark. It's Dan Clancy here, uh, the mayor, and. Um, Welcome. Your technology has uh, has worked, which is which is great. So uh, thanks thanks very much for joining us. Um, we we're right up to that point in the meeting where we'll um, where we come to you, but we we don't want to rush you. So just um, let you know that we are. This is the public um, speakers' time. Uh, each speaker has uh, three minutes that they get to address council on on the item uh, that's in the agenda this evening, and then councillors may ask you uh, questions after that. So we'll get you to to stick around. Uh, on the webcam uh, for a couple of minutes afterwards, just in case there's any questions, which you can you can elaborate further if you, if you don't get um, everything out in your first uh, your first go. So uh, at your um at your readiness, uh, when you're ready to go, we're we're ready to hear um, what you have to say. You're talking on item 15.1 this evening. Oh, yeah, yes, thanks, Mr. Mayor, uh, and thanks very much for the opportunity to speak with you all this evening. Uh, as mentioned, I'm uh, speaking with regards to item 15.1 on the agenda, the uh, branding and naming strategy for uh, new major venues. Um, I wish to speak specifically with regards to the proposed renamings of the Moore Recreation Reserve and the Ted Summon Reserve in Maui to single sport specific names. Uh, both of these reserves are multi-purpose venues with the Moore Recreation Reserve being home to not only AFL, but also cricket, netball and croquet, while the Ted Summerton Reserve hosts AFL, netball, fire brigade competitions, as well as cricket. There appears to be an argument that the reasoning for the changes is, is an enhanced value to the community by changing of the names to these venues to become single sports specific. 
I strongly question from where this suggestion has come from is there are no other major ovals in Australia that have AFL as a direct part of that oval's name. And those that have cricket in their name, such as the Melbourne Cricket Ground, is because of the historical fact that the MCG was developed and, and is still managed by the Melbourne Cricket Club. I wish to point out La Trobe City's values that the La Trobe City in the Latrobe City Council plan regarding respect, fairness and equity. Neither of these proposed name changes reflect this value as single sport naming of a venue that is otherwise a multi-sport venue is not at all respectful to the other sports that take place at that venue. The community's equity in each of these venues is very much shared between RFL cricket and the other sports that take place at those venues. And I can only assume each of the tenant clubs at these reserves have long paid the same rates to La Trobe City for the usage of these reserves. I therefore put it to the councillors to vote against the proposed name changes of these two venues by way of an amendment to the resolution. And thank you very much for your time and stay safe. Thanks very much, Mark. And uh, we'll, we'll get you to stay on the line in case any councillors have, have a question for you. Uh, yep. Councillors, you can just indicate with your hand, uh, Councillor Gibson, I've got you as a, a question. Yes, please. Or maybe a clarification, if that's permissible. Uh, to, to, to Mark or to, to us? To Mark. No, yep. to Mark. Yep. Um, thanks, Mark. Look, uh, I hear what you're saying. In relation to the um, the Centre for Excellence, the Cricket Centre of Excellence at Maui, that is just for the cricket pavilion. That's not for the whole pavilion. Does that make more sense? Yeah, well, if it's just for the cricket pavilion, the, the, uh, the indoor centre, which is... Uh, then that would certainly make a lot more sense that if that venue is cricket specific, then the title should be cricket specific. And yeah, that, that certainly makes sense. But the way the agenda reads, it doesn't read that way. Yeah, sorry. Um, but that is specific for that, uh, that pavilion. And yes, you're right. It, it is just for cricket. So that's hence the name. Thanks, thanks, Councillor Gibson. Um, any any other questions that we might have of, of Mark? Yes, Councillor Middlemas. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Mark, what's your suggestion for the naming? Well, the more recreation reserve for argument's sake, and for those who don't know, I've got a long history with the more recreation reserve. The background of that reserve is that the mall community very much paid for that oval and it is for the mall community and it is shared between well, at least four sports. And I think the current name of the mall recreation reserve is quite appropriate for that reserve. Similarly, the Ted Summerton Reserve. I, I don't know the history of Ted Summerton. I don't know who he was, but he has obviously played a significant part in the uh, history of Maui, um, so uh, I don't think it should be a single sport name for for either of those venues. Whereas the other venues, uh, multi sport in the nature that the, and um, uh, the, and the names that are being proposed are multi sport in the in the in their way. All right, thanks, Mark. Um, Councillor White, question. Yeah, just to thank you, Mark. Thanks for uh, uh, your presentation this evening. And I suppose uh, the 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 idea, as I understand it uh, from my uh, conversation so far in relation to this matter, that the idea, that the uh, the words more recreation reserve is still going to be there, uh, but this is really sort of uh, trying to uh, identify the uh, uh, the facility that it has this. Uh, this other significant dimension to it now with regard to AFL, that is, that it's the home of Gippsland Power and then it's got that, you know, the, 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 
the, the quality of the ground at uh, the main oval and together with that the um, the synthetic surface there as well is, I think it's my understanding is it's trying to identify that particular element or those elements within the reserve and, and to uh, to in order to be able to give them a brand that can be sold in terms of uh, bringing uh, other uh, events and activities to that particular locality and uh, and it's not to take away the name more rec reserve at all but to complement that do you have a few, and, and and so I'm asking oh, is that your understanding and and uh, and have you got any other uh, well, you're, I think you're indicating that perhaps you'd rather see just re, 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 uh, continue to be known as the more rec reserve, or actually more recreation yeah, well, reserve. Yeah. Yes, well, if I could use other major sort of regional venues around Australia, like, say, Cadinia Park in Geelong, it, it, it's still known as Cadinia Park, unless it's got a, I guess, sponsor's name type of thing, and every, everybody recognises that that's a, a major AFL venue, but it's, it doesn't have AFL specifically in its name. And you could go around like Kazali's Oval in Cairns, um, York Park in Launceston, Eureka Stadium in Ballarat, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, to, to, to score a, a venue which is multi sport to be a single sport thing is, is, is quite disrespectful. If it's a single sport thing like uh, Councillor. Uh, uh, given mentioned earlier, like the indoor centre, then that's fine. But uh, a multi-sport facility, yeah, it, it should be reflected as a multi-sport facility, regardless of its so-called centre of excellence. Thanks, mate. I might I might seek uh, clarification, um, you know, just in case the the report itself um, either either missed it or, or wasn't clear. But I might just ask the CEO. Um, Mr. CEO, would the would the name of the Mall Rec Reserve stay, and would it would essentially be the Mall Rec Reserve, which is the the home of the Gippsland Regional AFL Centre of Excellence, and then the Ted Summerton Reserve, which is the home of the Cricket Centre of Excellence? Is that the is that the plan? Yeah. So, if, sorry if there's confusion in the report uh, there for any of the readers, but certainly for those two reserves in particular, those names of the reserves are not proposed to be changed because that's been gazetted as that particular reserve at some time in the past, as I understand it. Um, the other ones, though, in terms of the Gippsland Regional Aquatic Centre, obviously being a new entity on it, its own site, that's that's also, I suppose, within the Hubert Osborne Park Reserve um, as an example. So that's sort of naming of those facilities as such. So that was certainly the intention in terms of naming of um, those facilities. And even the... Um, the indoor sports stadium um, in terms of the basketball facility, that's within the um, Catterick Crescent Reserve, if you like. So it's, it's really about branding of those particular facilities within uh, those centres or those reserves as such. And so it's about your yeah, branding and image of those. So uh, from, from the officer's perspective, it's about uh, placing a mark, if you like, on all of our centres of excellence and our new facilities as Gippsland Regional Facilities or La Trobe Regional, as, as per the report. So, uh, sorry if that's confusing, uh, confused um, readers or or like, but that was certainly the intention of the report. Thank, thanks, Steve. Because yeah, I, I wonder whether that mightn't have come across in the report. Does that does that help, Mark? Yeah, it certainly does. Um, but I, I just uh, so long as the, the reserve is constantly known as the Moore Recreation Reserve or the Ted Summerton Reserve, I I, I, I can speak. The, I've had to write to council on six occasions now that in various reports and newsletters that the more what is the more recreation reserve has been known as the more football ground and put in cancel publications under that name of the more football ground and that is most disrespectful as you can appreciate. Uh, like I'm a member of the more cricket club and to, for that ground to be known as a more football ground that it doesn't sit very well <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, so as long as it is constantly referred to as the Mall Recreation Reserve, respectful of all the users of that reserve, then, and, okay, acknowledged in some places as a centre of excellence to AFL when it's appropriate, then yes, I think that would be okay. All right. Well, that's good, and, and thanks thanks for clarifying that. Are there any other councillors that wish to ask Mark anything while he's still on the line? Councillor Gibson? Can I have another bite at the cherry? Sorry. Mm. Yep. 
so given what sorry mark i'm just clarifying so given what you've heard what you've said when you first came um spoke to us you retract that sorry i don't, i don't understand sorry all right given that well it's not going to be no it's still going to be the more recursive and it's still going to be tip summerton do yes. you retract what you're saying or or not uh, i think what i'm saying is fairly consistent with what is the reply is actually so uh, I'm, I'm fairly happy with <laughs> with the end results <laughs> all right no worries thank you Thank you. Um, so, Mark, well, thank you very much for, for, for getting online and going through the technology. Normally, we'd be in the room together, but uh, we do appreciate you, you dialing in and um, and certainly answering those questions. Uh, I think we've we've heard your your message loud and clear, and that's um, uh, resonated with across all the councillors. So, we certainly do appreciate your time and and the, and the time you've taken to prepare. Oh yeah, thanks very much, Mr. Right. Mayor. Stay safe, everybody. Oh. All right. Thanks very much, Mark. Yeah, you stay safe too. Mm -hmm. Might um, see if we can get Mark out. There go. And um, Mark's left us. So that, that, that comes to the end of our public participation time uh, with no questions on notice. And uh, just Mark was our only public speaker um, on that item. So we move to uh, item nine which are on our agenda, which is the notices of motion. Uh, and the first notice of motion uh, has been um, presented to us uh, by Councillor Harriman. Councillor Harriman? Moving, Mr Mayor, if I may. Th thank you very much. And Councillor Gibson, I note you seconding with a nod. Yes, oh, thank you. Good on you. That's great. All right, so I have a mover and a seconder on this notice of motion. Uh, it's, it's on the screen there as well. Do I have any opposition? No, no opposition. Councillor Harriman, as the uh, mover, would you like to speak? Just just so I can make people aware of why this motion has gone up, Mr Mayor, um, and I thank the councillors for not objecting it to this motion. Um, basically, the, the reason I put this motion up is that a number of years ago, the VLGA um, engaged a lot more with regional and rural councils, and that has dropped away dramatically, particularly over the last couple of years. Um, Doing some research, I found that there's views espoused by the VLGA and some board members that probably would have a major negative impact on some major industries in our region and also have a very negative impact on a large number of our ratepayers. Um, they're driving agendas without engaging with this council. The, the level of engagement, particularly from when I first joined council nine, ten years ago, has dropped off dramatically, um, particularly in the last couple of years. Um, we used to get visits from the VLGA to, to the council. Um, they engaged with, with the councillors that were members of the VLGA. That, that hasn't happened. Um, there's a lack, from what I understand, with a number of councils across rural and regional areas, but there is a lack of engagement and across um, the Gippsland region as well. Um, and I just, Mr Mayor, at a time of austerity when we're, we're looking at our budget and cutting our costs, I just don't see the value of for money of staying in the VLGA. Um, even though we've paid this year's fees, there's, there's in the agreement that we have to give six months notice before we intend to leave. Um, I'm, I'm happy to walk away now and send a message to the VLGA that they're not doing the job that they're being paid for from our point of view, that they need to lift their games, particularly with engaging in regional and rural communities. And they also need to look at how their agendas that they're pushing, whether privately, personally, or as a board member, have an impact on member councils. And I just don't think they've done that or doing that at the moment. Um, and I also look to the resignation of their female vice president or vice president who happened to be a female, um, that uh, I don't think it boded well for the organisation. And I just, uh, I don't believe they're living up to, to the, the promises that they've made. Um, and I guess the, the biggest uh, disappointment, Mr Mayor, is with this notice of motion going in, um, we 
the CEO has received a letter from the CEO of VLGA. Um, she didn't reach out to, to, as I know, to myself as the the, the uh, person who put up this notice of motion, um, and I find that very disappointing. I think it I think it shows that lack of concern for for regional and rural areas and and for this council and and a lack of engagement with the council and council laws. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Councillor Harriman. Uh, Councillor Gibson as the seconder, would you like to speak now? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, I'm, I'm happy to second this motion for the simple reason that the VLGA is reporting to speak on behalf of council, local government. Now, it's not made up of elected officials, whereas the MAV is made up, all positions are made up of elected officials or and it's only the positions like just like council that it is staff and they're not elected officials so for that reason they're purporting to speak on our behalf but they're not part of the um they're not actually elected officials so how do they know so for that reason no i, I don't wish them speaking for us at all thank you Thanks very much, Councillor Gibson. Uh, I've got Councillor McFarlane and Councillor O'Callaghan as well who wish to speak. Councillor McFarlane, you, I saw your hand first, so I'll go with you. Thank you, Mr Mayor, and uh, I certainly respect Councillor Harriman and Councillor Gibson's uh, uh, comments in relation to this matter. My concern, however, has been one since I was at first elected to Council, where I've always questioned when we have an MAV a municipal association of Victoria that represents every local government authority in Victoria. I'd, I've always wondered why do we do we then need another local government association or another representation group? Um, I'm, I'm of the belief from what I've seen in my past four years, uh, the municipal association of Victoria engages quite regularly with council in relation to a number of activities that, that occur. I do admit I see a, a number of things come through from the local government, the Victorian Local Government Association, which uh, I'm, I'm pleased to see too, but I just do not understand why we need two representative groups. We, we're talking about um, uh, dollars here. The MAV costs us quite a, a number of dollars to be a member of. Uh, the Victorian Local Government Association, I think, costs us somewhere near $20,000. And uh, whilst when I've, I, and I, as you would have, be aware, Mr. Mayor, I have asked this question on a number of occasions in the past, and uh, it was indicated to me at that time that this association was formed many years ago at a time when when local government was under some threat, and uh, and maybe the MAV wasn't representing it in in the form it needed to. This is what I'm told historically, and uh, hence uh, the local government association grew out of that. Uh, and I'm not particularly interested in the history. Um, and, and I'm not even particularly, well, I am particularly interested in, in how things operate now, but my, my real concern is if there are two organisations that basically are providing the same sort of service, albeit a little bit different on occasions, uh, I think um, we have an obligation, or I believe I have an obligation to my ratepayers to ensure that our, our money is spent wisely, and I believe at this point in time that I, I can only see that we need to belong to one of them. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks very much, um, Councillor McFarlane. I just, um, I'm a bit um, reluctant to do this. Councillor Gibson, you just mentioned, I think I may have heard you say there was no elected councillors on the board. There are, there are six elected councillors on the board of the BGLA. So I just, just, just want to, did I hear, is that what you did say? Sorry. No, it's not just made up of elected. Yes, that's what you said. Sorry, I thought you said none. But yeah, thank you very much yep, for, for that clarity. I thought I might have heard you incorrectly. Um, thanks for that. Um, Councillor O'Callaghan. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Actually, questions rather than speaking, if that's okay. Okay, sure. Um, and further to what you were just discussing, uh, my question was a question for the CEO, if he can actually provide us with some information around the makeup of the VLGA in terms of that board structure and the numbers at the moment and how that sits. Uh, to you, Mr. CEO. I was talking to myself, Mr. Mayor. Did the old trick of leave my microphone on? 
the board, uh, the VLGA is, is made up of uh, six elected board members who are councillors, and then there are three co-opted skills-based independent directors uh, that make up the, uh, the board. And at the moment, they currently have two independent directors. And also, Miss, sorry. Sir. Yes, Councillor Callaghan, sorry. Yep. I'll just go, sorry, a bit of a delay. Um, and also, uh, were they extended the opportunity to speak to us tonight? And what is actually the cost comparative to the MAV costs um, to us at the moment? Yes, uh, I did uh, advise them the matter was on the agenda tonight and, and had they had the opportunity to speak um, before the meeting. Um, they had, um, had provided some information that I'd circulated. They were comfortable just with that information being circulated uh, to councillors. So in, in relation to the cost difference um, from uh, memory, the VLGA um, is somewhere just below half the cost um, of, um, just sorry, just above half the cost of um, the MAV in, in relative terms. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Oh, Meek. Yep, thank you very much. Um, Swiss so yeah, numbers on notice. Sorry, Mr. Oh, okay. Just in terms of exact dollar amounts, so I just have to take that on notice. But uh, I do know, yeah. I'm comfortable with that indication of percentage, Mr. Meek. That's all I needed. I don't need anything further. Thank right. you. Thanks, Councillor Kelly. I'm going to Councillor White now. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I suppose just to uh, follow on uh, with um, the CEO's response, my understanding is that a, a portion of the amount that we pay to the MAV actually is then on forwarded to the ALGA, Australian Local Government Association, as a, as a fee to be associated with that organisation as well. Am I right? Uh, so in terms of our, sorry, our membership with the MAV? That's right, uh, yeah. Um, that's actually something I'd have to take on notice. I wasn't actually aware of that one. So. Okay. So, Sorry. My, my only other question, uh, Mr. Ramir, is um, I suppose, and just to be clear, according to, we, we all got a uh, the, the letter from the CO of VLGA today, right? And uh, in it, that it indicates that uh, the financial year for VLGA is July, 1 July through to 30 June. And uh, indications are that that uh, uh, I'm not sure where we're at with regard to fees. Have we, uh, are we according to them, that uh, we might might have already sort of uh, uh, be, be maintained our financial uh, uh, financial status with them uh, right now? Am I right in saying that? Um, yes, through you again, Mr. Smith. So yeah, our our membership for the 2021 financial year is actually paid in the 1920 financial year. So we've actually paid for our membership for the next financial year. Uh, Councillor Ariman, I think they had indicated earlier, there's a process that we would need to go through um, to, um, to um, resign. And there's a six month period on which we wouldn't have our fees returned for that period, notice period. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor White, satisfied? Yep. All right. Any other questions? Uh, any other questions? First of all, and then any other speakers? Any other councillors wish to speak? No. No. Then, uh, sorry, Councillor White. Just, just to uh, very briefly, I think that uh, in in the current climate, that uh, this is uh, um, something uh, uh, a notice of motion that uh, is worthy of support. Um, Certainly, as yes, Councillor McFarland did indicate, there was a time uh, many years ago when there was a some disillusionment with the MAV, and uh, and that uh, caused this uh, Victorian Local Governments Association to be uh, uh, have a reason to to emerge, and uh, and so it was really uh, more, uh, if you like, uh, for some of the the what you might say uh, councils that were feeling as unloved at the time, but as well as that. It was meant to be a providing an opportunity for uh, individual councillors to also take out a membership with an organisation such as that to be able to uh, develop their uh, their experience and skills and abilities to be a councillor. And uh, so, uh, but as time's gone on, I think that the uh, MAV has really uh, uh, become more and more in touch, if you like, with uh, with the current. Uh, needs of councils and uh, and have been a very good resource to this council in particular in my time particularly when I've been sitting the chair as mayor in the past Mr Mayor 
and uh, so I think that uh, we uh, we're right to be supporting the MAV as we are, and that um, and it's time perhaps to give the VLGA a break. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor White. Um, any other speakers to this for or against the motion? No. Then Councillor Harriman will give you an opportunity to close as the mover. I think the other councillors have put it very eloquently. Mr Mayor, I'm, I'm happy with it. They've covered all bases and I don't need to take up any more time. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Harriman. We have had speakers um, and so we do need to put this to the vote. So all those in favour of the notice of motion. Uh, see all hands, so that is unanimous. So thank you very much. That has been uh, carried, uh, Councillor Harriman. Thank you very much for the notice of motion. Uh, the second notice of motion this evening uh, sits with you, Councillor Gibson, uh, is the Lake Narrakan foreshore land, uh, landscape master plan. So I, I note your wave moving that. Thank you. Do I have a seconder for this one? Councillor Law, I see you seconding. Any opposition to this? Opposition. Councillor Gibson, would you like to uh, open? Yes, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I brought this motion forward to ensure that when the state or the federal government um, come to us with buckets of money for shovel-ready projects, which they do periodically, we are in a position to put forward projects which meet the criteria. As some on council would remember, this plan was adopted about three years ago. As such, I'm making, I'm asking that we review the plan to ensure the plans are the most effective for our community and the Trove City Council. This is similar to what Councillor Middlemiss put forward at the last council meeting, having our plan shovel ready. So I ask for the support of my fellow councillors to ensure that the Lake Narrican area is best positioned to gain potential funding if and when the opportunity presents itself to have our jewel in the crown of Lake Narrican in the best position possible. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Gibson. Councillor Lord, did you wish to, uh, to speak to this? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, just clearly it would be good to have it updated to the latest point, but we all understand that this master plan is all reliant on a private equity um, firm developing the actual you know, surrounding area. So, I mean, something minor may be done, but the major work won't be done, I wouldn't think, until the uh, private equity um, freehold owner actually does some starts to do some major work down there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Law. Uh, any other councillor wish to speak to this? Uh, councillor McFarlane, I see your hand. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I uh, certainly support uh, Councillor Gibson's uh, um, proposed notice of motion, and I would like to think uh, as an organisation that we would be uh, dusting off a lot of our master plans to ensure that everything is as updated as it can be, so that when that opportunity does come for finance, that uh, we have a list and uh, on their merits, then uh, those that that uh, meets all the guidelines gets in first, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But I certainly support uh, uh, Councillor Gibson's motion. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor McFarlane. Any other councillor wish to speak to this, Councillor Harriman? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to speak in support of this motion. I think. Um, Quite often we, we look at Latrobe City and think, what do we offer for people to come and live here? We've had jobs in the past who have taken a number of hits in the last couple of years. And I see the Lake Narrowcan precinct with foreshore views, with boating activities, um, being an absolute, as, as Councillor Gibson said, an absolute gem. Unfortunately, at the moment, it's an uncut gem and it needs a bit of polishing. I think if we can get this plan reanimated and as council law said it's going to take private equity but i think it's going to need an input from state or federal government we need to have this plan ready to go when the government is ready to go and i i, I just see it as a great development opportunity for for the whole region that you know we've we've just had a speaker talking about naming areas as the gippsland this and the latrobe latrobe that i think with lake narrowcan when you look at the number of people that come down and use the 
the dilapidated facilities that are there for boating already, the, the fact that we have a, an international water ski championship that's been run there, the potential to develop this site and make it a hub for water skiing in the eastern suburbs and a potential hub for a large number of people moving out of the city. I, I think the fact that, we, that Councillor Gibson has put this up is, is very relevant. And I think it's where we need to be on the front foot and ready to go if and when funding becomes available. So I fully support it and congratulate Councillor Gibson on putting it up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks very much, Councillor Harriman. Is there any other councillor who wishes to speak either for or against this? Councillor White. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm uh, also in favour of uh, the proposed uh, uh, content of the uh, notice of motion here for this particular matter, Lake Narrican. The thing that I suppose that I'm uh, particularly wanting to highlight here is that, uh, and uh, Councillor Minimus might be able to be a bit more uh, 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 tuned in on this one than I am, but uh, my, Lake Narrican, the, the long term future of Lake Narrican, that's something that we also need to uh, really make sure that uh, we don't lose. Now, don't take our eye off the ball with that because uh, I think that uh, there's part of me that some, somewhere says that uh, Lake Narrican is so much uh, interconnected with the uh, long term future of uh, uh, the uh, Yulon W power station. And uh, so, uh, what is it, 2032, something like that? Uh, anyway, that, that's just an aspect that really we just make, we need to make sure we, we don't take our eye off the ball on that particular aspect. Thank you very much, Councillor White. Any other councillors wish to speak either for or against uh, this one? Councillor Middlemas, you're, you're almost dogged into this one. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, uh, Councillor White dropped me right in it. Um, as uh, one of Council's representatives on um, the Ministerial Advisory Committee on Mine Rehabilitation, um, I can report there has been some background chatter that uh, in 2030, 2032, when uh, Yulon W station is scheduled to close, there will be no need for uh, the storage dam, which is uh, Lake Narrican. Um, and uh, I think the body responsible for it would welcome the opportunity to uh, uh, remove the dam. So uh, in addition to upgrading our master plan, so we're ready, shovel ready as uh, councillor uh, Gibson says, we also need to be running parallel with it and, uh, and letting the government know that it is a permanent recreational facility for our community and uh, we won't brook any talk of it, uh, shall we say, being emptied. So there are two, two parts to this one. One is a strategy to be saying to the government, leave it there. It's part of our recreation. It's, it's part of our community. And also now we've got all these plans ready. Let's have some money to... to uh, uh, polish the stone and say it at call. Thanks. Thanks very much, Councillor Middlemas. Uh, is there any other councillor who wishes to speak to this notice of motion? No, then Councillor Gibson, we're back to you uh, to close. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Look, yes, I would suggest we want the state governments to know well and truly that we're not having that emptied if and when it's finished with your lawn and lawyering. Okay, um, just clarifying a couple of points. Yes, I, I take on board what Councillor was saying about the private um, investors with that development, but it's not just their um, land that we're talking about because we also, as you know, we've got the foreshore and we've got our caravan park. So it's... You know, if there's money going to be um, handed out, let's ensure that our facilities are the best possible facilities that we can have because then you'll track people down there and you actually will help sell the blocks of land that the private investors want in the first place. So, you know, it's helping both ends and... You know, at the moment, the private investors um, are a bit strapped for cash and, and that's fine. So we're not waiting for that. In the meantime, we're ensuring that it's all in the best position possible for our community and council. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Gibson. Um, 
So we've had speakers, we need to put this to the vote. All those that are in favour of this notice of motion. And that's all nine hands that has carried unanimously. Um, thank you very much, Councillor Gibson, for the notice of motion. We are moving over to um, the 10.1, uh, which is the adoption of the budget. Now, uh, Councillor McFarlane, you noted early on that you were um, uh, had a conflict at Resolution 1. This um, item in our agenda has been split into two resolutions, Resolution 1 and Resolution 2. We'll deal with Resolution 1 first. So, Councillor McFarlane, I'll dismiss you from the meeting and then uh, we'll, we'll have the officers bring you back in. All right. So, Councillor McFarlane has uh, left uh, the, the, um, the teleconference, uh, which means that we're just dealing with item uh, with agenda item 10.1, but it's just resolution one, which is adopts the salaries and wages for the budget. Councillor Middlemas, I note you, and Councillor Harriman, I note you as well. Uh, Councillor Middlemas, you're moving that resolution one. Councillor Harriman, I take you as a seconder. Unless it was a question. No, seconding. Okay, thank you. Uh, any opposition to this? No, no opposition. Councillor Middlemas, did you wish to speak? Just very briefly, uh, Mr Mayor, this is a technical device um, to avoid the conflict with um, Councillor McFarlane. Uh, it simply takes out and uh, approves a section of the, of the budget. In actual fact, what we're just voting on is an integral part of the budget, but uh, um, as I say, it's, it's a merely procedural method. So uh, I see no conflict, no problems whatsoever in what is being proposed in this section of the motion. I certainly have some problems with the second part, but uh, um, yeah, no problems with this one. All right, thank you very much. Councillor Harriman, did you wish to speak to Resolution 1? I, I think uh, Councillor Middlemiss has, has done an admirable job explaining it all, Mr Mayor. Thanks very much, Councillor Harriman. Are there any other speakers, uh, any other councillors who wish to speak to Resolution 1? No. So, um, Councillor Middlemiss, you have the opportunity to close. No, nope, I didn't think so. So uh, we'll just vote on this resolution one now. So if councillors um, just indicate with your hand. Yeah, so that's all eight hands are up. So thank you very much. That resolution one has um, has passed uh, unanimously. We'll get the officers to um, contact Councillor McFarlane now and invite him back into the teleconference where we'll deal with uh, resolution two, which I, I'm sure there'll be much more discussion on once we've carved off that small part of uh, the entire budget. Um, and for people who are reading the agenda or seeing this at home, it's um, uh, resolution one had one dot point and uh, resolution two has uh, something like uh, 24 dot points, so it's a, it's a much bigger part of um, of the uh, the budget. When we've been meeting together, we do, it's a bit easy to get someone back in the room, isn't it? You just uh, pop out, we find them at the biscuit tin and uh, bring them back in. Any word from the governance team, Mr. CEO? 
just checking, Mr. Mayor, so I'm sending a message, just asking that exact question. I hope nobody joins our video now that I'll be um, thinking there's no sound. Turn my background music next time. Introduce. <clears throat> I don't know. We could put up a holding slide while we waited, but. Um... A song, Mr. Mayor? Um, no, no. <laughs> It's a, it's a lovely suggestion. I'd like to give you a rendition of something, but... Um, you don't have your guitar there, Mr. Mayor? No, no, there's one in the other room that I could wander into the room next door and play the piano for if you want. Uh, no. Saints so theme song would go down well, Dan. Thank you for the theme song. Good that. You've been singing it just about every week. I, I thought you might have come up with Jim Carrey's version of Mockingbird. And I suppose a, a, an opportune time to a quick shout out to the people who are um, sitting at home on their uh, Monday evening um, watching our, our council meeting live. And thank you for the text messages that are coming through to tell me that Council McFarlane's not back yet, but um, we're, uh, we're working on it. And uh, we do apologise for the lag in time, but uh, once he's back in, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get back to it. And if, uh, if you want to take a break and uh, go and check out the football that's on tonight, you can. Football, on today, football every night this week. It's unheard of. Thank you, Councillor Kelly. <laughs> I understand somebody's on the phone to Council McFarlane or trying to help him get back in. Yeah. Sometimes when you leave the meeting, it still thinks that you're in it and um, you can't join it once you've, once you've already in it. And um, that is a problem if you, you don't close the go-to meeting and then open it again. It thinks you're there already. Right in now. Here we are. Thank you for the music too. Thank you, Councillor O'Callaghan, for the musical interlude, Hotel California. Councillor McFarlane, you've got your, your ears on. Can you hear us? And can we hear you? We'll just check that. Um... Thank you, Mr Mayor. Testing. Okay, thank you very much. We can see you, we can hear you, you can hear us and see us. Uh, we're moving to resolution two now of uh, item 10.1. Councillor McFarlane, did you have a question? Oh, no, you might be moving. No, I, was Sorry. Happy to, I was happy to move resolution two, Mr Mayor. Right, resolution two, we're moving to resolution two. Um, and Councillor White, I see you waving, seconding. Thank you. Uh, any opposition to this? Okay. Councillor Middlemas. Thank you. No other opposition? Um, Councillor McFarlane, uh, as the mover, you uh, get to speak now. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Well, let's... Um... Uh, this is the adoption of our uh, 2021 budget uh, and as has been said uh, at, the, at the council uh, uh, meeting a couple of months ago, the, um, the proposal that is put forward here provides for a zero increase in rates, although that will change property to property based on dependent on valuation, but across the board as a zero increase. It uh, ensures a continuation of the level of service that we've um, been accustomed to over the past 12 months. It would continue uh, to allow us uh, a, a fairly significant capital works um, budget ahead. And it also includes a business and community support of some $1.5 million at a time when 
when our community uh, is in need. And based on uh, yesterday's decision, I think that uh, will put some further pressure on that process. Uh, not included in the uh, zero increase, of course, is the, um, uh, the landfill levy, uh, which sits outside of that process. But Mr Mayor, what, what we've done, we've gone out to the community here um, uh, with the proposal, as, uh, as I've just outlined. Uh, we've had 19 uh, people and or groups that uh, made submissions, uh, and some of those uh, 19 actually presented uh, to us recently. And whilst uh, those uh, uh, items that were raised by the uh, individuals and uh, groups uh, have not uh, been able to fit into the current budget, they're all items that have been noted and will be considered and worked through uh, in, in the year ahead and, and hopefully will uh, some will see themselves in uh, allowances in future budgets, some uh, just by the means of uh, what the, the uh, uh, proposals were will be accommodated in some of our uh, uh, operational activities as we go. But Mr Mayor, I'm, I'm certainly, uh, uh, as a, an individual representative of the community, uh, pleased that we've been able to um, uh, retain uh, this type of budget um, in circumstances where um, our community is broadly doing it uh, fairly tough. Uh, and uh, let's hope that we can get through this next 12 months um, with some success, uh, not uh, just from a budget point of view, but from, uh, from a community point of view. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor McFarlane. Councillor White, you're the seconder. Um, would you like to speak now? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I'm happy to speak. Um, I um, support the uh, this particular uh, uh, budget as we have before us this evening, and uh, certainly it's been subject to uh, comprehensive consideration by uh, by us as councillors and also by the administration of the organisation as well. And uh, so there's been a. I think it's important to acknowledge and recognise and say that there's been a significant focus on the um, on the future that's facing our uh, business and community uh, sectors and uh, and uh, I think that that's uh, tried to be reflected within this budget and obviously with budgets of this magnitude we're not going to be able to please all the people all the time and there's obviously there's things that I would have liked to have been in the budget but are not and uh, uh, but on the other hand it's uh, as councillor did finally did indicate that we, we we were committed to the notion of uh, zero percent uh, increase or to, uh, in relation to uh, the budget compared to with the previous year and uh, and of course uh, it, I want to reinforce too as Councillor McFarland did that uh, whilst it's zero percent overall the fact of the matter is that individual properties the rates on individual properties will, will be some will be higher and some will be lower based on valuations that occur annually these days so uh, that's important for our community to understand that and uh, the other thing I think it's important to say that uh, certainly, um, as it's mentioned in the report, that it's been the budget's been prepared on the, using financially prudent principles, and it's also uh, taken into account the uh, the seven key themes that uh, we have within our uh, strategic objectives to make sure that uh, you know that uh, we're talking about supporting job creation, we're talking about improving education and training outcomes, we're talking about uh, ensuring. Uh, council's open and transparent and responsible in what it does and uh, we've talk, talked about growing civic pride all those sorts of things but uh, doing it in a way that uh, is uh, is uh, is um, really as I said it before financially prudent and uh, the, you know and uh, so I think that the important thing for me is that uh, uh, bearing in mind the current unique circumstances this council faces and on behalf of the community the budget which uh, sits before us tonight is uh, one that represents the balance required between uh, uh, community expectations and affordability, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor White. Um, Councillor Middlemas, you um, acknowledged uh, an opposition. Did you wish to speak now? Certainly did. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, I find myself in a rather unusual position, Mr. Mayor, as uh, most councillors will know that over my uh, period as a councillor, my lengthy period as a councillor, I've gone out of my way in each uh, budget, uh, uh, shall we say, process to, um, in getting the councillors together, the councillor only sessions, to work with the councillors to try and achieve a consensus so we can go to the community 
and say, we all agree on this. And uh, I think I can claim some credit for achieving that over many years. So I'm rather saddened tonight to find myself in a position where I totally disagree with what we're doing. By setting at zero, uh, the increase at zero, um, it, it means that the increase in rates next year, if we do, if we do decide on one, uh, will have a compounding effect that could mean that we would be in the region of 13 and a half, somewhere around that million dollars, down in 10 years' time in possible raised revenue. And that's where I disagree with a lot of people on this one. I believe we face uh, a considerable financial burden over the next decade. The, uh, the resources we've already used and the borrowings we've needed to complete the state government's, uh, shall we say, gift uh, projects as part of the Hazelwood uh, compensation. I'm talking about the Performing Arts Centre, the Gippsland Regional Aquatic Centre and all the many other things. They came with a price. We, we have to, we, we've used a lot of our reserves to pay, for the, to pay for those. And we're borrowing to pay for those. So we're cutting down our future available funds already and to cut it back by um, the figure that I've just quoted, I think is a dangerous, dangerous situation. In the same period, our industrial base will change dramatically, as we've mentioned on the Lake Narican issue. State government efforts to replace Hazelwood jobs has shown that uh, considerable funds will have to be expended to create replacement jobs as the brown coal industry winds down let alone the threat to the paper industry. Look, I support doing even more than is proposed in this budget for those people or those industries, because they employ the people that uh, are affected by the COVID uh, situation. However, I do not think this budget is the way, the way forward. I have to say, that the saving for people of a hamburger and a packet of cigarettes in value will not set us up over the next 10 years and is the wrong step. Having said that, with 11 seconds to go, I will say to councillors that I accept this is the majority budget position. I accept that. However, in addressing the younger councillors, I'll ask you to look to the gallery when you're deciding the 2030 budget because the old bloke up the back shouting, I told you so, will be me. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Councillor Middlemas. Uh, are there any other councillors who wish to speak to this, either for or against? Councillor Harriman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd just like to start off by actually acknowledging those people that came and made submissions to council on the on the budget, um, there's a number that had some some great suggestions uh, that were put forward for changes to the budget. Um, there were some great suggestions put forward of how we could spend uh, some money on on projects that were of interest to them. And um, I know there's a be a response going out to them, and and we haven't been able to include all of those great suggestions in this budget. Um, and with that in mind. Um, I would, would be asking that the process we undertake actually change a little bit, that we discuss what's going into the budget with our ratepayers before we begin the budget process. So councillors and the officers have an idea of what the community sees, sees as its needs and what the community sees as its wants and, and, and how it wants us to spend their money. Um, so I would, would ask that that be considered, that we look you know, with the new council coming in October, November, uh, that we, we look to that new council and, and maybe give them the opportunity to meet with the ratepayers first before we put out uh, a fairly well-formed budget that, that is hard to change um, in, in March. Um, I'd also like to point out that, that I do support the 0% wage, 0% wage increase, 0% rate increase. I understand Council Middle Misses uh, views on it, and I, I fully understand that. But I looked at, we used to run at 4%, and the state government imposed a 2% cut on us. We've, we've adjusted to being 1.3 to $1.4 million down already at the, at the hand of, of the state government, and that's year after year on year. 
So three years into it, four years into it, we're, we're already $10 million behind the, the eight ball already. So or $8 million behind the eight ball. So council has to be agile and council has to move with the times. I understand it's not a big difference, but it's the, the moral of what we're doing and the respect we're showing to a lot of our ratepayers that I think is important. So I fully support the 0% wage increase. And I think council's smart enough to, to do some dancing to get through this and hopefully council minimis, I can be sitting up the back with you with a beer in 2030 and uh, we, can, we can both have a chat about it then. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Councillor Harriman. We will not be allowing beer in the uh, council chamber, not even in 2030, but I like the sentiment of um, sitting together. Are there any um, other councillors who wish to speak um, to this um, agenda item resolution two about budget? Councillor Gibson. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Look, if the public, which they are our bosses, if they had received all the information uh, over a 10-year period and stated they wanted a 0% rate rise, I would have no, no problem at all. But they didn't. So we're taking out over $3 mil $13 million in 10 years. Something has to give. Is it wages, um, not wages, well, is it staff, is it programs, something's got to give because you will also have your lawn come offline and um, we've got Hazelwood and what else are we having? So we haven't had a, a great influx of jobs to um, replace what we have lost with Hazelwood. So, you know, you can't keep on cutting the cloth. So I am concerned about that. Now, even with all that information not going out, we still had some mis submitters who actually were against 0%. And let's face it, 0% to 2% is the equivalent to a Palmer. Well, Council Middle Miss will say um, a different one, but I've said a Palmer, which is $28 for your average property. Okay. Um, now, the other point to, to remember, though, is, okay, at 0 and 1%, you were helping businesses and community, but at 2%, you were actually helping individuals, community and businesses as well. So, you know, it, not everybody is who isn't working at the moment and they're not in the... Um, financial difficulty that some individuals are, but in this the w budget that we're looking to put down today is we've cut out the ability that we had in um, a, a different percentage to help the individuals. So I am concerned about that. I am also concerned about sitting up the back at 2030 and what are we going to have? So. I am, and walking down in the actual council building and looking at, well, okay, over the period of time, which project's going and which staff member are we going to have to cut? Because you can't take $13 million out of the budget as well as your lawn, you can't you can't keep doing that without they're going there will be some repercussion. What it is, I don't know. But if the community had known all of that and still wanted zero percent, I wouldn't have a problem. But they didn't. There was my problem. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Councillor Gibson. Uh Councillor O'Callaghan wish to speak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a question um, either for you or to the CEO. My understanding is that that 10-year implication information and data was clearly available in the draft budget that was publicly made available. I certainly had it as a public document, provided it to community members, and it was made available to the public through our draft process. Can I have that question answered by the CEO? Mr. CEO? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. So in the, yes, in the in the uh, 
previous uh, reports to council and in this report also, it does highlight that uh, impact and some people did uh, pick up on that. I think you can see that from a couple of the submissions that uh, Councillor Gibson had highlighted where some people were opposed to it, um, but that was included in the uh, information provided to right. council. Councillor Callaghan, that's your question. Yep, okay. Uh, any other councillor wish to speak uh, to this item? Councillor Howe? Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I agree with what everybody's saying. So it's, um, I agree that we're at the $13 million um, dollar hit over 10 years is, is going to be very hard to, um, to um, try and budget in future years. Um, but it, it, was in the, um, it was in the report that people knew. I, I spoke to a lot of people about it. Um, and if everyone knew there was only one submission, I think, that, that um, recommended a 1% um, increase rather than a 0% increase, no one recommended go the full way. Um, the way I look at it is with our community has been kicked around a lot with, um, with what's happened in the last 12 months. Um, it was, it's been a tough enough um, region as far as, as unemployment uh, for the last four years since Hazelwood was closed. We've had bushfires, we've had, uh, we've had COVID. Um, I would like to, I would like the, the money in the budget, but you look in the, the eyes of their community and they don't want another kick in the teeth. I know it's only $30, but I think it's more of a principle that they want us to stand up for them and, and um, give a little bit back. So, um, as much as I'd love the money, I think I would. Um, I am supporting the budget tonight. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thanks very much, Councillor Howe. Is there any other councillors who wish to speak uh, to the budget? No. All closed. Uh, Councillor McFarlane, you were the mover. Do you have an opportunity to close the argument? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and I appreciate the comments that uh, my colleagues have made. And uh, hopefully, Councillor Middlemist, like yourself, I'll be sitting up uh, at the back in 10 or so years. And um, hopefully, we'll be saying together how wonderful Gippsland's regional city has been in that their, their rate base has expanded and uh, dollars are no longer an issue. They're, they're the sort of things that we uh, commit funds to our economic development team and the likes to uh, enhance our community grow our rate base and hopefully give us some financial prosperity in the future. I'd just like to comment, Mr Mayor, from a public point of view, I believe that I'm, I've been elected by my uh, rate payers to represent their views and to make decisions and choices uh, as, uh, as required. And, and in this instance, I have. If my, uh, my rate payers believe I've made the wrong choice, then in October they'll, um, they'll tell me so. I'm certainly satisfied that we've cut the cloth to suit the current occasion. And I, I just don't think we had a great lot of choice. And uh, in doing that, we've set a bit of an example, I think, in our community as well, to say that we just can't, when, when the chips are down, we just can't go on doing what we've perhaps always done. So we are leaders in the community, we've got to show some leadership. And I believe this, this uh, rate uh, or this budget process uh, reflects that leadership. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor McFarlane. As uh, we have had speakers and now we have closed, uh, we need to put this to the vote. So uh, for resolution two of item 10.1 uh, for the adoption of our budget, uh, for show of hands, please. Okay, I'll call these out. Uh, Councillor um, Howe, Councillor Harriman, Councillor White, Councillor O'Callaghan, Councillor McFarlane, Councillor Law, and myself, I'm showing a hand, and in opposition, Councillor Middlemas, and abstaining, abstaining, Councillor Gibson, abstaining from the vote. Thanks, thanks very much, Councillor Gibson, for working that through. Um, I was reading what you were doing there. That was good. Thank you very much. Um, thanks, Councillors, uh, for, for that respectful um, debate. Uh, we are moving on to uh, item 10.2, which is a proposal for the renaming of the southern section of Brady's Road to Faulkner Rise in Tyres. Do I have a mover for this? Councillor Howe. And a seconder? Councillor Harriman. Councillor Howe and Councillor Harriman. Thank you. Any opposition to this? 
Uh, Councillor Howe, would you like to speak? Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, just um, a bit of the history of it. There's a, um, they've made like two ends of the road at, at tyres miss, uh, with the middle not, not being constructed and not looking like being constructed um, in the immediate future. So to avoid the confusion and improve uh, public safety, uh, it's been decided to rename the southern side of the road. Um, so what we're doing tonight is really just the next next step in the process. Um, we have put it towards our road and, and place name advisory committee. They selected Faulkner Rise, uh, which was named after uh, Mr. Frederick Roland Faulkner. It has been discussed by the um, the Tyres Community District Association, as well as the two property owners abutting the sectional road. We have also gone out to the community feedback. Um, so now we're, all we're, what we're doing is we're stamping, putting our stamp of approval on it so that it, we can then make an application to the geographic names of Victoria to rename that section um, of the road. So I'm happy to, to uh, move this resolution. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor Howe. Uh, Councillor Harriman is seconded. I think Councillor Howe has said it all and most eloquently, Mr Mayor, so I'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Is there any other councillor who wishes to, to speak to this in opposition or, or in favour? No, there's no. Councillor Howard, the option to close if you if you wish. Uh, no, thanks, Mr Mayor. Nothing to add. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we have had speakers, so we do need to put this to the vote on uh, item 10.2. All those in favour? That's all hands. That is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's great. We are moving to 10.3, which is the community consultation for the potential community housing Victoria uh, development into Brook Street Mall. Thanks, Councillor Middlemas. I've, I've got you there as a mover. Yep. Uh, do I have a seconder for this one? Councillor McFarlane, thank you. Councillor Middlemas, Councillor McFarlane. Any opposition to this? Councillor Middlemas, your, your floor. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, I wonder if I might just um, start with an explanation. The Local Government Act requires that uh, if a councillor's uh, property um, or property values may be affected by an issue, uh, that they should uh, abstain having a, a conflict of interest. Um, this property we're talking about is, I think, about half a kilometre, perhaps less than half a kilometre from my home but it is around two right angle bends and is out of sight from my home. But I think I should put it out in the open um, that I do live in the general area of this property. However, any, cha any changes in values that would uh, follow from this property would affect everybody in that area, um, uh, just, not just me. So uh, I believe my interpretation is that I do not have a conflict of interest. Moving on to this proposal, um, the, the proposal by Community Housing Victoria Limited to um, develop a facility there um, basically um, a social welfare facility um, is a good one. Uh, at the moment, the land, the land there is a bomb site, and those of you from all remember the Collins Street Primary School which is now slowly being developed for housing, but I can remember sitting there as wasteland for about 35 years. So to get something built on the abandoned or, uh, or cleared from Rook Street site will be good for the area. Council behave very responsibly on this. It is not obliged to consult the public as to what is proposed. However, we did go out to, I think, 600 uh, premises within a large radius and ask for the reaction of the community. Would you oppose this type of facility um, being placed in your area? The vast majority of the objections, I think seven out of nine that we received back was a fear that this would become a repeat of the... Um, rooming house development in Macmillan Street, which council approved some years ago. Um, this nearly every objector focused on the antisocial behaviour relating to that facility, and they simply did not want a repeat of that facility um, again. And uh, councillors should be very, 
very conscious that that rooming house facility was actually approved by council um, despite objections and it's uh, one that I could not take part in because I'm the next door, next door neighbour and therefore was affected. But so what we're faced with, the general reaction in the area was one of, um, well, no response except for people who honed in on the Millen Street facility. Councillors, can, can you indulge me with an extension? Happy to move. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor Gibson. I think you've got a seconder there. Is anyone in opposition to that? I don't think so. I think we're all in favour of the extension. Yep. All right, thank you, okay. Councillor Lewis, as you were. So um, what we've, what we've um, have here is a facility uh, that will um, shelter people who have been victims of domestic violence. Uh, it will be, from what I can understand, well, well secured, well supervised, um, and an essential facility for our community. Um, not just particularly the Brook Street area community, but all of all, all, all of the Trove City. So there can be no argument against the need for such facility. Um, the argument is solely about the implications of the Macmillan Street um, uh, guest house and the antisocial problems that uh, are associated with that. So, Council, you are being asked tonight to, to put a condition on the sale of this land, and that condition is that it cannot be used for a rooming house, that it can never be used to duplicate the experience in Macmillan Street. I believe this will go almost completely to the objections that the commutes the community members have raised, and I think um, it, it is a good compromise. The organisation working with uh, the Government of Victoria to put this facility in is Community Housing Victoria Limited. I originally suggested that they agree to a condition that simply said there would be no other use for this facility other than what it's designed for. They became a little coy about that. So um, I'm not too impressed with their reaction, to be honest. I'll, I'll put it out there. I'm not, not impressed with it. They're supposed to be a social welfare organisation, but they wouldn't come at what I thought was a complete solution to this problem. So for the, for the residents going ahead in the future in this area, just keep your eye on Community Housing Victoria Limited. They weren't prepared to give all the conditions that I thought would be appropriate. But councillors, you are being asked to facilitate the sale of the Truruk Street, um, former Truruk Street uh, school site for a, a, a centre to assist uh, in solving uh, uh, family violence problems, uh, a very worthwhile uh, proposal. And you are being asked to put a condition on that sale that it can never be used for a rooming house. I think we're about 95% of the way there, councillors, so I would recommend that you support. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor Middlebus, um, and thank you for the extension, councillors. Uh, Councillor McFarlane, you were the, the seconder. Would you like to speak uh, to this? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Just supporting uh, Councillor Middlebus's comments, and perhaps just to point out or to, or to restate and clarify and restate that this land is not owned by the council. The land is owned by the government and the government may choose to do what it wishes with the land. However, Community Housing Victoria has asked us to be the broker to move between them and the government so that they can secure the site um, for their purpose. As a result, the council buys, Community Housing repays us, so it's basically just a, a, a turnover fee. And as Councillor Middlemiss uh, has said, on the basis of the uh, uh, the comments that we had back from the community who were concerned about the uh, uh, the the uh, rooming house, uh, the a uh, covenant proposed to go on that land so that that uh, that does not occur. And again, in supporting uh, Councillor Middlemiss's comments, we do have a lot of issues relevant to family violence, and we do need places where women and children can feel safe. And I'm sure that this uh, uh, this development, the way that I've read it. Uh, will provide uh, those people with that, that safety and uh, the way I see it will provide our community with not another room in house. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor McFarlane. Are there any other councillors who wish to speak uh, to this at all? 
Councillor White. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I think that um, on balance, I'm in support of this uh, particular uh, approach that, that's uh, been uh, recommended in the uh, resolution that uh, has been moved by Councillor Minimus. So I guess my uh, concerns are that, uh, I mean, obviously, clearly the, the issue of uh, family violence and the displacement of women and children is, is a key issue uh, that needs to be confronted and addressed. And, uh, and certainly, these sorts of uh, this sort of unit accommodation will uh, will uh, be a, a godsend in that regard, and uh, but I think think that uh, the thing that uh, I suppose um, I'm also mindful of is the the commentary that's been received, you know, in terms of the objectors who uh, who have uh, made their, their views known to us and uh, worried about uh, the uh, the uh, uh, what is the the uh, uh, the uh, climate, if you like, within the neighbourhood uh, that could occur from time to time. And will there be appropriate support services you know, in proximity to be able to provide the support uh, whenever those circumstances arise? And, uh, you know, so that uh, the amenity of the area can be reasonable. And, uh, and I think that that's the only concern I have is to, you know, I, as I understand it, it's um, uh, the uh, Community Housing uh, Victoria Limited would be entering into a partnership with uh, Quantum support services, so far as uh, the, the operational uh, setting for these units, if it comes to fruition, uh, and, uh, and obviously they've got a lot of experience in that space. But uh, I'm just uh, concerned to that the uh, that the response, uh, whenever the circumstance might arise, can it be? Will it be appropriate? Will it be prompt enough to be able to make sure that the quality of life of those uh, uh, women and children who, who are going to be occupying the residences there is going to be, you know, the quality, their quality of life is going to be maintained and uh, and not really sort of, um, you know, uh, really trashed uh, as far as that's concerned. And uh, so all I'm really trying to say, Mr Mayor, is that uh, the support network around this particular development is what's critically important here. Thank you very much, Councillor White. Do we have any other speakers um, to this motion? Councillor Minimus, would you like to close? Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, can I say that everything Councillor White said is absolutely true. It, it will depend on Community Housing Victoria Limited, Quantum and the various uh, um, responder agencies to make sure that this is handled well. As I said, I think we're 95% there. We have closed off the greatest fear of the community that we'd have another uh, rooming house in that area. Um, that's not to occur, that cannot occur now. Um, and certainly uh, I agree with Councillor White, um, it, perhaps it's a role for council to keep some vigilance in this area. Um, perhaps uh, we should have kept some vigilance around the Macmillan Street issue too. But um, I think we've gone 95% of the way towards meeting the uh, uh, community's um, concerns at um, the Community Housing Victoria Limited. Um, I'll say it again to them, uh, you could come that little extra distance by simply signing off and saying, nothing will be done on that site other than the intention in this, uh, this resolution here. But we're almost there. And what we have to balance it with is the community need for such a facility as this. Uh, there is tremendous community need for this kind of stuff and uh, we as a council are facilitating the passing of that land from the government to Community Housing Victoria Limited. We weren't required to consult the community but we have done so um, and uh, look on balance I think this is a, a worthy project and I think we have met most of the concerns of the community. Thank you. Thanks very much Councillor Middlemas. Um, for closing that and uh, councillors we are going to put this to the vote now uh, the proposed resolution is now motion and is 10-3 all those in favour and that is all hands thank you you can clearly see that is carried unanimously uh, we have uh, moved to items 11 on the agenda we have no correspondence item 12 is presentation of petitions we have no petitions this evening we move to 13.1 and this is the changes to destination Gippsland 
Constitution and the Board Membership, Councillor Gibson, I note you. And a seconder, Councillor Howe. Thank you very much, Councillor Gibson and Councillor Howe. Any opposition to this? No, Councillor Gibson, would you like to speak? Just quickly, Mr Mayor, look, oh, I'm happy to move this. In the past, the Trobe City Council has not been on the board, uh, has not had as any say, per se, and I think it's most appropriate that we actually have our CEO on the board so we can be voicing the Trobe City Council's position on much more and hopefully get a, a better outcome um, because without us being in the room, you don't know what will or won't be um, presented and having us in the room actually puts us right up front and centre. So happy to move. Thank, thanks very much, Councillor Gibson. Uh, Councillor Howe, second. Uh, yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Just to re re reiterate what Councillor Gibson has said, um, it's the major, it's the major tourism body in Gippsland. We need to be in the room. Um, no one better than our CEO. We are. It is in there that we can. We are looking at it in twelve months, so we can look at then and um, make any adjustments if we feel necessary. So, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Councillor Howe. Is there any other councillor who wishes to speak to this motion? No, Councillor Gibson, did you wish to close? No, everything's been said, but well, we'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? And that is nine hands I can clearly see. So thank you very much. We move to the Latrobe um, City submission to the Victorian Parliamentary Inquiry for COVID-19. Councillor uh, Callaghan, I can't see you, but I can see your hand covering your face. So thank you very much. Um, and you're moving this. Moving, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks very much, Councillor Kellyan. And uh, do I have a seconder? Councillor White. Councillor Kellyan and Councillor White is a seconder. Councillor Kellyan, would you like to speak to this? Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. The Victorian government actually asked us to provide some feedback in relation uh, to the COVID nineteen response, particularly in relation to the effectiveness of the Victorian government approach in relation to the current crisis. They had a very specific terms of reference that we provided feedback to. Uh, so we have addressed that and I think it does cover off on most of the areas of concern uh, that we needed to highlight and also give some reflection to that feedback that we've received from our community uh, and also from small business and their impacts. Uh, but more broadly, what we see the impact being on the Trobe City itself as a municipality, uh, but also those living within it. We understand that um, as this pandemic in itself moves fairly rapidly, some of this is point in time information and things will continue to change. And uh, our views on this will adapt as will the approaches of the state. In relation to some of the issues raised by community, uh, access to COVID-19 testing being quite limited, in our local area, particularly asymptomatic testing, uh, changes of location, some inconsistency of approach has been highlighted, particularly by community members, and concern in relation to um, clarity around expectations and uh, what that looks like. And that's an issue that continues for our community to this day. We'll continue to advocate on their behalf in relation to that. There's also been uh, commentary from our community groups and sporting clubs around capacities to meet, continue to operate their clubs, support their organisation, but also to fundraise, and that that's having significant longer term impact for them. Um, we do know that there's been uh, community uh, requests in terms of police engagement and people's adherence to restrictions, and that's certainly a concern for our community. And our community would, as much as possible, like to see that um, as effective as it possibly could be. Mental health and anxiety concerns are always a significant risk in relation to these types of emergencies and risks and community are concerned about that also. Also, I have some significant concerns raised by community in relation to people moving through Latrobe City. Uh, so those from outside areas uh, for any number of reasons. And we understand now that there are significant areas of roadblock that have been put in place and we're grateful to Victoria Police for their assistance in relation to that. Uh, there's a range of other things that we've provided feedback on. They are contained 
within report, some of our businesses related to issues in relation to JobKeeper and a range of other things which were more in the federal remit, but wanted to provide that information back to the state also, because there are significant uh, concerns by our local business community around the impact of the current circumstances and what that means for them and accessing support and assistance that they could require on at times can be somewhat bureaucratic and difficult. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I have no hesitation in re recommending this good work of our officers to all of my colleagues. Thanks, Councillor O'Kelligan. Uh, Councillor White, you were the seconder. Did you wish to speak to this? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, just want to uh, endorse the remarks made by Councillor uh, Kelligan, very eloquently put, and uh, to acknowledge the work of the staff of the organisation who have uh, been associated with the gathering together of all the information and the content of the report and the data that goes with it, and, uh, and, and uh, really reflecting the uh, uh, the impacts on our Latrobe community in terms of. Uh, uh, business and, uh, and community life, but also in terms of the council operations itself. And uh, so I think that uh, this is a document that's very worthwhile looking at by our broader community for uh, all the effort that's gone into it to uh, just to see uh, and perhaps appreciate uh, the kind of uh, unique challenges that have, uh, be fa that have faced our community and in particular that have faced the, the Trove City Council staff uh, of, of our municipality in terms of adapting. So a very good report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor White. Does any other councillor wish to speak uh, to this? Councillor O'Callaghan, did you wish to close? No, no, uh, no need to close. We've had two speakers, so we do need to put this to the vote. So all those in favour of this, Thank you very much. We're all up there. Thank you very much. That has, has, has passed uh, unanimously. We move to 14.2, which is the investment roadmap. Uh, Councillor O'Kelligan, I see your hand up. Are you moving this? Okay. And Councillor Gibson, you are seconding this? Yep. Thank you very much. Um, uh, any opposition? No opposition registered? Councillor O'Callaghan, would you like to speak? Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Uh, the officers have put a great deal of work into this. I'd like to acknowledge Gail Gatt and her team in relation to our draft investment roadmap. Uh, we are moving out to a public consultation. That would be the proposal of this motion if accepted by Council. And that would be six weeks to allow our community members and particularly our business community the opportunity to actually speak to those things uh, that are outlined in the map, but also um, give us a bit of an indication of what their other perspectives may be, if there's anything that we have missed. Uh, the nature of this La Trobe City Draft Investment Roadback is about promoting our long-term sustainable economic growth within the region, but also we're aware that with the current circumstances impacting on the community, that we need to redouble our efforts in terms of supporting business and our economic growth across La Trobe City. So we consider a broad range of things, everything from the way we brand, from our airport developments, tourism and other strategies across the municipality. But we also take on board a great deal of the work that's been undertaken by our community in relation to any engagement we've done before, including that around our strength land transition and some of the other work done by a broad range of committees that exist within La Trobe City as well. And we thank them for all of their work and their contribution. We want to make sure as much as possible that our community at the point when we're ready to uh, reboot coming out of COVID-19 and the responses associated with that are best positioned that both the Victorian government and the federal government have the opportunity of understanding what the potential opportunities are to support our business and economic growth and also what that may look like in terms of the expectations of our business owners and their businesses of all sizes they are certainly diverse, they are vibrant businesses and we want to do everything we can to support them and ensure their success in the short, medium and longer term despite the challenging circumstances we find ourselves in. There's been a broad range of consultations that were undertaken in relation to this work. Uh, some of our businesses have spoken directly with us in relation to their expectations. Councillors have had the opportunity to meet and speak to it and been a range of community roundtables as well to provide support. But in addition to that, our economic development team 
um, have been continuing to provide direct support to local businesses and they've also brought together some information to further enhance that work. We've been looking at focus areas of skills and training, advanced manufacturing, regional and rural health innovation, and also the circular economy. All of these things are important to us as we continue to go forward as a municipality, but also as a community who can see opportunities into the future. And we do have a continued and important focus on growth from an economic perspective. I have absolutely no hesitation in commending this report to my colleagues and again thank the officers for all of their work. It was certainly substantial in some very trying circumstances. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Thanks very much, Councillor Callaghan. Uh, Councillor Gibson, you were the seconder. Did you wish to speak to this? Just adding to what Councillor O'Callaghan has stated, look, what she stated, it's that and much more because we're looking at our future economic vision for our region. So that is so important. And we're trying to identify new emerging industries and new opportunities because we know that we will need to find new opportunities for the, the growth of our city. So that's so important. And that that is what is part of this plan so I'm happy to support this and it also gives us a marketing tool to help actually attract those businesses so happy to support that thank you thanks very much councillor Gibson uh, is there any other councillor wish to speak uh, to this item 14.2 uh, councillor White thank you uh, Mr Mayor I uh, just uh, I only want to say that how important it is for our community to uh, take advantage of this opportunity, this six week period opportunity, to be able to familiarise themselves with the uh, draft of this uh, document that we have before us, because it is a uh, comprehensive document. It does try and capture uh, what the future might look like. And, uh, and I think that uh, re what we're really looking for is for community, strong community feedback and if in, in, in whatever way it might come, that is particularly to uh, reinforce the fact that, uh, that maybe we're on the right track. But if we're not, you've got to, this is the opportunity to tell us. And uh, so, you know, the, the various mediums of uh, getting the message out there, we need to make take full advantage of to ensure that uh, we do get uh, a comprehensive response that uh, we can really uh, digest and, uh, and make sure that the document we have before us is going to. Uh, be a document that's going to be very worthy for us to be able to refer to at all times going forward into the future. Thanks very much, Councillor White. Are there any other councillors who wish to speak um, to this item? No. Uh, Councillor O'Callaghan, did you wish to close? Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Just more of a message to those business owners, those involved in any level of economic connection within our community to know that our council is here to support you, that our officers are directly engaging with business and economic support all the way through. This uh, draft investment roadmap is about underpinning the great work that you do. It also, as Councillor Gibson says, sets the tone for the future, gives us the opportunity to be able to showcase and create opportunities for further investment, not only within individual, but in industry groups, but also across the municipality more broadly, uh, not only at state and federal government level, but across a broad range of areas that may be looking to seek to invest as we come out of the current circumstances we find ourselves in. We are very fortunate to have a great depth of economic opportunity available to us and a community that's quite flexible around the opportunities it could present for us and how we can actively participate. I encourage our community members uh, those interested in business and otherwise to take a look at the draft investment roadmap that our officers have brought together for us to give us your feedback as we are very interested in that uh, and to be very uh, robust in your testing not only of our thinking but the way we propose to move forward in relation to supporting future investment and growing our economy now and into the future. Thank you very much Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Kelligan. As we have had speakers, we do need to put this to the vote. So all those in favour of this? And all hands. Thank you very much, Councillors. That was very clear. Um, that has been passed. So thank you very much.
Um, we're moving over to 15.1, which is the branding and naming strategy for the new major venues. Do I have a mover for this? Councillor Harriman? Do I have a seconder? Councillor Howe? Any opposition? Councillor McFarlane? Sorry, thank you very much. There's an opposition. Uh, more, Councillor more Harry, question, Mr Mayor. Oh, it was a question. Thank, thank you. More of a question. Yes, you can ask a question now if you want. Well, a, a question following on from the presentation, which has brought to light to me that there's a couple of the um, uh, facilities there that perhaps don't reflect uh, all of the uh, occupiers. So the, my question is to the CEO, by the adoption of this resolution, can you just satisfy me that no occupiers of any of those facilities will be disenfranchised through this um, through this process. Thanks, Councillor McFarlane. Um, Mr. CEO. Um, so the, as I think I stated earlier, in terms of the naming of the the places, as in, like, if, if council were to go through a place the process of naming a road or a place, it would normally uh, put out um, would be required to consult with the community. So, for example, Ted Sumner and Reserve is known as that because it was either had been put in place for a very long time or council had gone through a process to name it as such um, formally. So in terms of place names, there's a formal process. So this process here doesn't override that. This is really in addition to that place name that's saying those venues will be known as those, uh, by those names that are outlined in the report. So uh, in, I suppose it's a little bit difficult to answer your question fully because you, you're asking there whether some in the community might be disenfranchised. Um, uh, so it's it's not taking away the names that exist. So from that in that respect, they're not. There's no impact on the the names of the reserves as such. I don't think the community is disadvantaged in any way in that respect. Uh, in terms of the names of the venues, there might be some uh, questions from of the uh, comment in the community about it. is that the right name? But I suppose the the tenor of the report is that uh, it's about uh, particularly for us positioning La Trobe City uh, with all these amazing facilities that are and you look at them, they are significant regional facilities. So that's the, the intent behind the naming of them. It's actually around naming of the venues as such as uh, places of either Gippsland's regional indoor sports stadium or uh, for us to be able to market them as the Cricket Centre of Excellence in terms of their promotion within those reserves. So I hope that um, helps answer the question, Councillor McFarlane. Thank you, Mr CEO. That does answer the question. Thank you very much. Um, thanks, uh, Councillor McFarlane. Councillor Harriman, you were the mover. Uh, would you like to speak to this? Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd like to commend the officers for coming up with this report. I think it has been a, a long-standing issue with a number of the facilities we have at La Trobe City, um, just being referred to as local local facilities when, as Gippsland's regional city and one of four regional cities across Victoria, a number of the facilities we have are of regional importance. And I think it's time that we actually stand up and, and make that abundantly clear that we do have great regional facilities here, that we are a regional city and that we have the right to use that moniker. Um, I think the officers have done a great job in looking at the naming of these centres and where they are. I understand Councillor McFarlane's question and, and the, the, the um, smart, the speaker we had, had earlier this evening, Mr Mayor, that we're going to have the Gippsland Regional AFL Centre of Excellence at the Mall Recreation Reserve that we're going to have the Gippsland Regional Indoor Cricket Sports Stadium at Catterick Crescent. But we're going to give them the name that defines what they are. And let's make no bones about it. The Moore Recreation Reserve and the AFL facility there is a centre of excellence. The Cricket Centre of Excellence at Ted Summerton Reserve is a regional cricket centre of excellence where young cricketers from across Gippsland will come and start their pathway journey through and hopefully following the footsteps of Peter Siddle onto national selection. And let's hope that through the AFL Centre, we can get more kids involved in playing AFL football, that through the Gippsland Sports and Entertainment Park, that we can get more kids through soccer, through a number of other sports that play there through rugby and get them through to a state or national level. Let's hope that at the uh, Gippsland Regional Aquatic Centre, 
that we can get more Olympians out of the pool from Gippsland and on the stage. Um, so I'm asking my councils to fully support this. I think it's a great initiative and I think it's about time we start putting our stamp as a regional city with regional facilities on the map. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Harriman. Councillor Howe, you were the seconder. Well, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councillor Harriman um, pretty much said what I was going to say. It's about time that, as, a, as, the, as Gippsland's only regional city, that we do stamp, put our stamp on these facilities to say that they are the best in Gippsland. And if you want to be part of it, um, that you, you come to Latrobe City. Um, if the AFL or anybody wants to, wants to run an event, or, or Netball Victoria want to run an event, the place to be, the place to run it is in Latrobe City. Um, but I think that when we, we go a bit further with our branding, branding scheme with the ribbon theme, um, it will tie everything in nicely. It will be, it will make Latrobe City a very, um, a very attractive and a very um, a connected place to live. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Well said. Thank you, Councillor Howe. Are there any other councillors who wish to speak to this? Councillor Middlewoods. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a very small contribution. I support what the previous two speakers have said. It's always been very clear to me, um, as an example, that the Gippsland Regional AFL Centre of Excellence will be on Mall Rec. And I think that was what Mr. Smith's concerns uh, was when he spoke to us. Uh, I think there's a, just a little bit of a misunderstanding. If you want to go to the Gippsland Regional AFL Centre of Excellence, it's on Mall Rec. So pretty clear. I don't see any conflict in, uh, in this at all. Um, I think the proposal is excellent. However, it would be unlike me not to have a gentle swipe. And uh, I have to say that I'm not quite impressed with the logo, but I will support the motion. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Councillor Middlewood. Are there any other councillors who wish to, uh, to speak to this? Councillor White. Yeah, just to uh, <clears throat> make uh, sort of similar observations, uh, and in particular in relation to um, the, um, the Gippsland Regional AFL Centre of Excellence, the um, as Councillor Millimus has indicated, I think that um, as long as the, the this, you know, we've got to be, um, if you like, uh, uh, concerned about and respectful to the journey along the way of all the particular sports that are associated with the Moore Recreation Reserve, whether they're talking about croquet, whether they're talking about cricket and also about football and um, and with, because it's, uh, it's uh, and for that matter, netball. And uh, so uh, yeah, it is a diverse uh, venue, the Moore Recreation Reserve, but uh, it's like uh, it's been indicated by uh, Council Minimus and others that uh, and the mover uh, that the uh, the venue is the uh, RS Salons as far as AFL is concerned, and uh, with the new facility there, the synthetic surface as well, uh, so that uh, really does need to have a brand on there, and it needs to be understood by our community that the branding is about uh, really uh, making you uh, uh, having a uh, mechanism available to us to attract events into our uh, municipality that uh, are going to really uh, be uh, a, a great experiences for our community, uh, not only for the Trove City community, but more broadly the Gippsland community to come and experience. And uh, so, uh, yeah, so it's it's uh, making sure that when we, uh, if this goes through as a resolution tonight, that our communication, our, our media campaign associated with it is clear, so that the community doesn't get offside. That they know that the, what the reasons for it and the the reasons are right. And uh, we need to make sure that our community understands and jumps on board and goes with us for that journey into the future. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor White. Uh, any other speakers before Councillor Harriman closes? I think, no, there was no one else. Councillor Harriman? No, all good, Mr. Mayor. I think our, our councillors have said it all. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we will put this to the vote. So all those in favour of this motion at 15-1. And that, now we've got all hands. So thank you very much. That is uh, carried unanimously by all nine councillors.
Thank you very much. Uh, we are moving to uh, 16.1, which is the outdoor pool season review. Councillor McFarlane, I saw you wave, and Councillor Harriman as well. Okay. Sorry, question uh, if I could, uh, Mr Mayor. Yes, Sorry, question. I may ask the question. I just know we've been at it for two hours. I'm just wondering whether a five-minute break would be possible, either oh, now or at the end of thing. this uh, motion. At the end of this one, we'll, we'll have a break. So that's a great idea. Thank you very much. I put my hand up at the wrong time there, sorry. It's all right, you've just given me a wave and that is very sweet, thank you. Do I have a mover for this one, 15-1, sorry, 16-1? Councillor Harriman, Councillor Gibson, thank you, is seconding? Any opposition? Councillor Harriman, did you wish to speak? No, I think it's self-evident and follows on from last year, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Gibson, did you wish to speak? Any other councillor wish to speak to this? As we've had no speakers and no opposition registered, we'll carry that one unanimously and then take a break. So thank you very much. Well, that's 16.1. We're up to 17.1 uh, and then we'll come back. We'll have a 15 minute break and we'll come back. Oh, 15 minutes are probably a little bit long, probably 10 minutes. Is that enough? Cup of tea, comfort break. Thank you very much, everyone.
Welcome back um, after our just uh, quick uh, break. Um, we are moving uh, along with the item um, in the agenda this evening, and we're up to 17.1 uh, in the, our, our agenda item, which is also on the screen there. 17.1 uh, is the Local Government Act 2020 Delegated and Community Asset Committee Instruments. Councillor O'Kelly again. Sorry, just connection problem, not sure if it's just me or others, but had some dropout. All right, thank you. Here again yeah. now, sorry, I was having trouble hearing you, Mr Mayor. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, you're a bit, little bit laggy there as well, um, but with your audio and thing. But uh, can you just touch again, Councillor Kelly? Is that any clearer, Mr Mayor? That's, that's in sync now. So were you just uh, flagging that or were you moving this uh, item? No, 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 just flagging that I was right. losing everybody for a minute. No worries. Uh, Councillor Howe, you had your hand up as well. Are you moving this item? Okay, so I have a mover in Councillor Howe. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Gibson, thank you very much to both of you. Uh, do I have any opposition to this? No opposition registered. Councillor Howe is the mover. You can get to speak. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Uh, pretty straightforward. This is just another um, it's another uh, resolution that we need to pass due to the introduction of the Local Government Act um, that was passed earlier this year. We need to change our special committees to either a delegated committee or a community asset committee by the 1st of September this year. Um, as in the report, we have eight such of these committees. Um, once we pass, pass this um, resolution, we can then look at each committee and decide which way we want to go. Um, the important thing to know is that um, the special committees they are a valuable part, uh, partners to our council um, in managing our facilities and gardens, and it'll be pretty much business as usual uh, once once this um, resolution is passed. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thank you to you, uh, Councillor Howe. Councillor Gibson, you were the seconder. Did you wish to speak to this? No, I think my fellow council said it all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any other councillor who wishes to, to speak to this item, 17.1? Councillor White. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. This is a, if you like, uh, a topic that uh, really has um, been one of uh, um, significant ongoing discussion in, a, in relation to one of the committees I'm involved with, uh, that's the Madison Park uh, Committee. And uh, so I suppose the, at the end of the day, this is, you know, uh, there's been a, a lot of uh, heartache and a lot of uh, uh, analysis done by the committee to try and uh, uh, identify uh, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, if you like, the terms of reference for that particular group and, uh, and how it should operate, etc. And uh, and here we go again, if you like. And uh, but I think that this is really. Uh, uh, was in the wind, I suppose, in one sense, that uh, this was uh, on, on the cards, that this was coming. And I think that uh, this does provide a more, uh, if you like, a uh, clearer framework within which uh, these sorts of committees can operate into the future. And, uh, and as Councillor Howe did say, uh, this is about getting the uh, getting the uh, uh, the instruments in place and, uh, and then figuring out from there what was going to be the most appropriate for each of those committees uh, that have been uh, identified on page 331 of our report tonight, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor White. Is there any other councillor who wishes to speak to this? Did I see a hand? Yes, Councillor McFarlane. Thanks, Mr Mayor. We're just, just um, following on from uh, the previous speakers and just perhaps to make comment in that that uh, the changes to the Local Government Act come through fairly late, even though we were planned uh, for last year and that did, they didn't occur. Uh, and as a result, with the 1st of September looming, meant that uh, this uh, process had to happen fairly quickly, which probably didn't give us the opportunity to talk to those committees as much as we would have had we had more time. But I'm certainly satisfied given um, that we have both the Community Asset Committee and the Delegated Committee. It gives some flexibility there with uh, CEO delegations and the likes 
to ensure that that uh, the, of those eight committees, those committees that, uh, and we need to be always aware that with all these committees, we have a lot of volunteers who put a lot of effort into uh, uh, to driving uh, the processes. We don't want to burden them with more uh, responsibilities or onerous tasks from a committee sense. And I believe the um, uh, the process here with the two types of committee uh, and the um, uh, and the terms that uh, apply to each will ensure that it's pretty much business uh, as usual. But certainly um, from the committees that I um, sit on there, we certainly don't want to be imposing additional roles and responsibilities on committees that uh, perhaps aren't necessarily uh, required. And I think this this uh, resolution here provides us with a couple of options and, and the, the best option will um, be picked to suit the uh, appropriate committee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, uh, Councillor McFarlane. Is there any other councillor who wishes to, to speak to this? No. Councillor Howe, did you wish to close as the, uh, the mover? Uh, no, thanks, Mr. Mayor. All right, thanks, Councillor Howe. Um, then we'll put it to the vote. So all those that are in favour. There's nine hands, so we'll pass that unanimously. Thank you very much, 17-1. Move to 17.2, uh, which is the councillors and delegated committee members uh, expense resource and support policy. Councillor McFarlane, I saw you giving away there. Was there a question or moving? Moving, okay, thank you. Do I have a seconder for this? Councillor Gibson, thank you very much. Any opposition? Councillor McFarlane, as a mover, did you wish to speak? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, well, again, this this um, this um, agenda item refers to an update as a result of um, a new local government act. And uh, whilst we currently have our um, councillors' um, members' expense uh, policy, resources and support policy in place, this document has um, been retweaked to uh, satisfy the requirements of the new legislation, and it inserts the uh, delegated committees should we have a delegated committee uh, that needs to come into that. So again, uh, it's just updating our um, processes so that we're, uh, we're legally right to go on the 1st of September when uh, the requirements of the Act uh, require us to be uh, in tune with it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor McFarlane. Councillor Gibson, did you wish to speak to this? Yes, thank you. Look, as as what was said, it is basically a procedural motion due to the change of the Local Government Act and we have to change different parts to make us comply with the Local Government Act. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any other councillor who wishes to speak uh, to this motion? No? Councillor McFarlane, did you wish to close before we go to the vote? No, thanks, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you. Then we'll go straight to the vote. Uh, all those in favour? Thank you. That is unanimous. All hands shown there. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to 17.3, which is the authorisation of council officer under the Planning and Environment Act 1987. Do I have a mover for this? Councillor Harriman and then Councillor White. Councillor Harriman, Councillor White. Any opposition at all? Councillor Harriman, did you wish to speak to this? No, thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor White, did you wish to speak to this? No, thank you, Mr Mayor. Any other councillor? No, as we've had no, uh, no speakers and no opposition, that is carried unanimously. Uh, thank you, councillors. We move to 17.4, which is the Audit and Risk Committee Charter and Appointments. Do we have a mover for this? Councillor White? Do I have a seconder? Councillor Harriman? Thank you. Any opposition to this? No opposition registered. Councillor White, did you wish to speak? 
Well, on reflection, Mr. Mayor, I'm just wondering whether uh, you know it might be uh, in the circumstance of seeing dot point number three on there. Maybe I should be. Uh, uh, I don't. I'm not quite sure whether that sort of uh, is, is uh, kosher, but I take advice. Uh, I and mean, grab advice from me, but it might be incorrect. Um, I'll grab it from the CEO. Um, just add Councillor White is named in the resolution. Um, uh, through you, Mr. Ed, normal practice would be that uh, councillors who are nominated don't normally not normally move or second and second those motions. All right. Do you want to? Would you like to step back a little bit, uh, Councillor White? Oh, we, we've got you on mute, but um, if that, sorry, if that's acceptable, Mr. Mayor. Yes, please. I can certainly do that. Um, yes, absolutely. So I had uh, Councillor Harriman as a second. Councillor Middlemas, you've got your hand up. Did you just want to? Um, I'm happy to re happy to replace Councillor White just procedurally. Thanks. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll do that. Um, we'll replace uh, Councillor Middlemas uh, with Councillor White and Councillor Harriman. You're still the seconder uh, on that one. Thank you very much, and and thanks very much, councillors, um, for that understanding. Uh, Councillor Middlemas, did you wish to speak to it? Uh, briefly, Mr. Mayor, I'd say that I'm looking forward to what Councillor White has to say on this. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Councillor Harriman, did you wish to speak on this? No, I think I'll wait to hear what Councillor White has to say, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. So, absolutely insightful. Thank you, Councillor Harriman. Councillor White, did you want to speak to this? It better be good. <laughs> it's a big build up. <laughs> ah, dear me. Uh, where do I start? Uh, seriously, uh, this is a um, important uh, uh, resolution that we uh, need to consider tonight, and uh, in regard to uh, the uh, uh, the audit and risk committee, the uh, the particularly in relation to the external appointments, and uh, and they're recognising that councillors are uh, part of the committee need to be identified as part of the committee as well, but uh, to have the arrangement in place so that the uh, expiry date or the end of term dates for each of those uh, in ex external members of the committee, independent members, are uh, uh, staggered, if you like, and uh, so that that's been reflected in the resolution before us. And uh, we're very fortunate, Mr Mayor, to have uh, these uh, independent uh, uh, representatives on our committee, and uh, they bring a lot of uh, knowledge, experience and skill to uh, the uh, to the uh, table when we meet, and uh, and so uh, they are uh, very uh, 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 very uh, valued uh, contributors to this organisation in terms of monitoring and uh, understanding the all the uh, issues that need to be addressed in terms of audit and risk associated with the local government and in particular Trove City. So uh, yeah, I'm happy to uh, support the recommendation uh, in the resolution proposed. All right. Thank, thanks very much, Councillor White. Are there any other speakers uh, to this? No. Councillor Middlemas, did you wish to close? Oh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I think Councillor White covered it um, very well. Seemed to be across it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Middlemas, for, uh, for helping us out with that one. Uh, we are going to put this to the vote, Councillor. So all those in favour of this, please raise your hand. And we have all nine hands up, so that is unanimous. So thank you very much, councillors. We're moving to 17.5, which is the tabling of the Assembly of Councillors. Councillor Gibson, thank you very much. And do I have a seconder? Councillor Howe. And any opposition to this? Councillor Gibson, would you like to speak to this? No, it's procedural. Councillor Howe, would you like to speak to this? No, thank you. Any other councillor? No, no speakers, no opposition. We'll cover, we'll carry that unanimously. Thank you very much, councillors. Uh, we've moved to the end of our items. Uh, we're at 18, which is urgent business. I uh, don't believe there's any urgent business before this council this evening. Nothing's been received before tonight. Madam Mr. CEO, can I just confirm that? Thank you. Uh, which means that we will close the meeting to the public. Um, so I need a mover for that, if I could. Thank you, Councillor Gibson. Councillor Harriman, I have you as well. Uh, is there any opposition to that? 
Councillor Gibson, you wish to speak? Councillor Harriman wish to speak? Any other councillor wish to speak? No, then no opposition, no speakers will carry that as well. Thank you very much. We will close uh, the meeting to the public um, and we will go into our uh, uh, confidential items that we have. We'd like to thank uh, people for, for sticking with us um, through the, all the technology and and the ins and outs tonight. There's been some gaps, but uh, we've, we've made some good decisions tonight. We appreciate people um, being able to tune in and um, and see what goes on within the Latrobe City Council and as we make decisions about the future of our city. So we uh, bid you good night and, uh, and wish you well. Please, everyone, stay safe, uh, take care. Remember to keep your masks on and adhere to all the rules. So...